Good day and welcome to Always Otoli. Today is Friday the 20th of March 2020. The time is 13.10 GMT plus 2. Today's video is uh, what I would call uh, a fairly special one from my perspective. Uh, it contains rare information regarding uh, United States share buybacks. Uh, the information is consolidated totals per year for the last 10 years. Um, the figures are quite uh, quite amazing. What follows is a, a, a quick breakdown as to what those numbers look like uh, from 2009 to 2019, um, and then afterwards a, a brief explanation uh, from a source with regard to uh, buybacks and how legislation in the United States has changed over time, allowing share buybacks and uh, how these buybacks effectively um, impact on the stock exchange and potentially uh, the United States economy. Um, I'm a, I apologize for the, um, the audio that is about to follow. I had some ambient noise that I had to filter out, so you're going to find a little bit of audio uh, fluctuation. Um, I hope you enjoy. Uh, please uh, stick with us and let's uh, go through the, the data, the information, um, etc. I put this consolidated information together after searching for ages for information as it's presented here and being unable, completely and entirely unable to find this type of data. Um, I found raw data, um, uh, but that didn't help anybody. So I had to put the raw data together, reformat the whole lot, uh, date-wise, um, unit of currency-wise, um, and then assimilate, consolidate. Um, I've done a by company assessment, but this is by year assessment. As you can see, uh, share buybacks peaked in 2015. Um, at almost a trillion dollars. Um, 2016, 17, and 18, pretty much of a muchness. There was a substantial drop off in 2019. Uh, I have no idea as to why that might have happened. I can only speculate that um, the CEOs and so forth uh, had an understanding that uh, the continued buyback process was unsustainable. Maybe there was a liquidity issue. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but that was a substantial drop off. Prior to 2015, that is 14, 13, 12, 11, there is a peak in 2013 relative to the um, other years, but um, 14, 12, and 11 seem to be pretty much of a muchness. 2010, substantial drop. I'm not too sure whether that was a year where the uh, information started being uh, uh, um, compiled and uh, um, sort of like formatted onto the website. Um, but that's an anomaly. It's, there's, there's nothing that um, uh, I can say about that. Let's have a look at my text in red. Um, I did this in June 2019. Thank goodness I sent that out to um, a number of people and as a result have um, at least proof that <laughs> I um, created the document um, at that time. The above total rounded up over 10 years is 6.566 trillion US dollars in share buybacks, excluding 2020. If anyone believes that this does not have a negative impact on the US stock exchange in terms of natural selection, that is the process of allowing normal market dynamics to take place, and the related synthetic impact on the US economy, then it would be interesting to know the motivation for such belief. What is unfortunately invisible is the leverage aspect behind such massive buybacks. If the on the margin, that is a euphemism uh, for leverage, uh, in 1929 it seems that um, people bought shares on the margin, that is effectively um, they borrowed money to buy shares. Process of buying shares in 1929 caused such havoc when the stock market crashed. What is the likely outcome of the stock market collapse today considering Today's leverage is a giant compared to the leverage in 1929. Unfortunately, with today's situation, this seems to be a little on the prescient side. Uh, nobody would have known, least of all me, that CB19 would have popped the bubble and we would be facing uh, what we're facing today. A stock buyback is the practice by which a corporation repurchases publicly offered shares of its own stock. The general basis of such a move is that by reducing the number of shares available, the value of each share will increase. Despite the technicalities involved in the process, our current weak regulation of stock buybacks is causing a profound harm to the everyday American people and more need to be aware of the need to address this issue. 
Until 1983, the SEC heavily regulated the practice of stock buybacks, creating what was essentially a soft ban. Under Reagan's deregulatory policies, these restrictions were lifted and replaced with a 25% cap on the value of stock that could be repurchased per day, as well as courtly reporting rules. In 1993, another fateful decision was made in which Clinton's Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, ruled that corporate executives could use their knowledge about the timing of buybacks to determine when to execute their stock options. Because stock buybacks are done anonymously through a broker and only disclosed on a quarterly basis, the general public would have no knowledge of why a stock price was rising, yet corporate executives would. In essence, a CEO could order a buyback to inflate the value of the stock and then execute their stock options for maximum profit. Since the SEC's 1993 ruling, this practice continues to be utilized by corporate executives. Between the years of 2003 and 2012, the 10 companies who repurchased the most stock had corporate executives who received 68% of their total pay in stock options. And surprisingly, stock options as a percentage of corporate executive pay continues to increase. The median salary of a CEO of an S&P 500 company has changed almost nothing since 2011, yet the median pay in equity for those same companies was increased by over 60%. As an example, Jeff Bukes, the CEO of Time Warner Cable, one of the largest companies in America, was paid only $2 million in salary, yet tellingly his pay in stock options was over $15 million. The potential ramifications of stock buybacks do not stop at income inequality, however. As companies spend more and more on stock buybacks, they spend less and less on workers' wages, expansion and research and development. In 2005 alone, Hewlett-Packard laid off 10% of its staff, yet between 1999 and 2005, it had spent $14 billion on buybacks. 3M, IBM and Pfizer, all once seen as great American innovators, are now spending more on stock buybacks than they are on the invention and development of new products and ideas, products and ideas that benefit all Americans. Every dollar that a company like Pfizer spends on stock buybacks represents one less dollar going towards the development of possibly life-saving pharmaceuticals. The lack of innovation might also be doing real damage to the U.S. economy as well. Evidence suggests companies who frequently repurchase large amounts of their stock tend to underperform those who did not practice buybacks. A fact set analysis of last year looked at the performance of companies in the S&P 500 who had bought back stock against those who had not. Those companies who had not repurchased stock performed best, even better than the average company. Those who had not repurchased stock saw a median return of minus 5.1%, an improvement on minus 6.4% median return for those who had repurchased stock. The 100 companies who had repurchased the most stock relative to the market cap performed worst, having a median return of minus 9.5%, far below the average company. All this suggests that the gains offered by stock buybacks are artificial, short-term benefits to shareholders and corporate executives at the cost of long-run long returns. Long-run returns that might actually create new jobs and opportunities for the American public. All of this is, of course, not to say that there isn't an argument for stock buybacks. But the evidence is mounting that stock buybacks are being abused by corporate executives for their personal gain. The economic consequences of stock buybacks must be explored and any attempt to address the issue of CEO pay must include the examination of stock buybacks. I really hope you enjoyed the information in this video and this video itself. Uh, if you like what you see um, or like what you saw, please click uh, the like button. Um, if you find this information uh, rare and uh, informative, please share it with everybody. Um, in my searches, I haven't been able to find the information that I've just presented. Uh, if you'd like to find out what uh, more we have to say in the future and in the past, 
please subscribe or click on links to previous videos and the introduction to Always Atoli. I hope you have a superb day.